Okay, so here's what happens, okay? Exercise, oops, went too fast, okay? Exercise, dehydration, thermal stress, hyperthermia, get a little acidosis, okay? Decrease oxygen to the muscle because the stiff sickles, okay? Shifts the oxygen dissociation curve to the right, okay? Change in that right bl red blood cell, okay? Comes down, get an inflammatory cascade, then you get microvascular occlusion, okay? So no blood, no oxygen, damage to the muscle, okay? Can be damaged to the kidney, can be damaged to the spleen, okay? Okay? That can lead to exertional collapse, that can lead to death, okay? So why is it important, okay? Because they can get all these things before they die, okay? But they can still die, okay? And the arrhythmias can come from the hyperkalemia, secondary to renal, okay? Um, splenic infarcts, um, and the whole compartment syndromes with, with rhabdo, and all sorts of other things, okay? And I guess that's what we're trying to prevent is the death, okay? Um, these are the things that put them at a greater risk, okay? Altitude, and certainly if your athletes are traveling and they're going uh, to Denver into the Rocky Mountain area, that's a consideration. That probably applies more to college age athletes and uh, um, uh, professional athletes, okay? They get pain, and sometimes it's hard to separate the ischemic pain from muscle cramps, okay? But ischemic pain persists, okay? Muscle cramps get better, okay? Sometimes they'll pee blood, okay? Obviously, that's obvious damage to the kidney, okay? Um, if there's hypoxemic sickling, they get a splenic infarct, then they'll often complain of shoulder tip or uh, abdominal pain. Okay, remember the diaphragm's innervated. Okay, what do you do if you have a kid? First of all, recognize it, okay? Not everything sort of dehydration and everything else, okay? Recognize it, okay? Remove them from the activity. Cool them, okay, if they seem to be warm, okay? Give them oxygen, okay, because that's what they need. Okay, that saves tissue, okay? Give them fluids. Okay, start them on fluids by mouth, okay, and they may need IV fluids, okay, but the bottom line is get them somewhere where somebody can check them a little better, okay. This is, don't be a hero out in the field on this one, okay, this saves lives, all right. More importantly, how do we prevent this? Well, first of all, we have to know whether they have it, okay. So the athlete's partly responsible for that, but now the NCAA says we're responsible for that, okay. Hence a new rule, okay? And there's a theory out there that we should modify all training for all athletes, and then you don't need to screen anybody, okay? Try telling a coach that, okay? Who's pushing his athletes to achieve what he thinks they need to do, okay? And sometimes the thought process goes out the window. Um, but what can we do for all our athletes? Avoid dehydration, get a conditioning regime, Okay, limit activities if they're not feeling well. Listen to the kid. They're not all wusses and trying to suck out of stuff. Okay, uh, and allow them to go at their pace, especially if you know they're a sickler. Okay, okay. and this is probably one of the key things. Uh, this is from Randy Eichler. Uh, fluid ingestion enough to keep pace. Okay. What else do we need to do? We've got to educate the, the athlete. We have to educate the coaches, okay? The, if the athlete's a, a sickler or a sickle cell trait, he needs to know it and he needs to share it with the appropriate people, okay? He needs to adjust their training, okay? They need to keep well hydrated. Coaches need to know about this so they don't push the wrong kid, okay? And remember, white skin does not mean you don't have sickle cell trait, okay? You have to add a, allow a adequate recovery, okay? Best thing is don't make everybody sprint at the end of practice, okay? As physicians or medical staff, trainers, we need to make sure that their asthma is well controlled, they're well hydrated, we monitor, we know who's got at risk, and we make sure they, they're well hydrated, okay? They do well if you let them set their own pace, okay? And just some more, okay? Uh, Fever, 
we've all encountered the situation where, well, geez, he's sick, should he practice or play? Okay. Um, exercise can cause lots of things, okay? Naturally, okay, in healthy people, neutrophil production, okay? It can cause a decrease in lymphocyte production, okay? Natural killer cells, okay, it can decrease them, okay? And repetitive exercise can actually, if you go on long enough, you can increase your natural killer cells. And so it's sort of almost an a oxymoron, okay? Acute infections, lots of things can happen when you're sick, okay? You can feel rotten, okay? But again, thinking along that return to performance thought process, get the athlete to think what it's doing to them. What's, it, what's this infection doing? Well, it's impairing my muscle strength, it's affecting my aerobic power, my endurance is less, my coordination is less, my cognition is less, um, and boy, my fluids can be altered as a result of this, okay? The metabolism is going, okay? It decreases their exercise capacity and their catabolism, okay? It can cause tissue wasting, okay? And obviously, uh, protein catabolism and negative nitrogen balance are synonymous, okay? Um, these can be temporary, days to weeks. Sometimes it can be more permanent to months, okay? Acute viral things tend to have more respiratory, but they can also have GI. They can have cardiac, okay? Exercise after a viral illness can increase the risk of muscle breakdown, okay? Um, and remember, our athletes are, are superstitious by nature, okay? Um, they're taking pills, sometimes prescription stuff that can affect uh, an illness. Sometimes they're taking over-the-counter stuff. Sometimes they're taking banned substances, okay? A lot of them use herbals and supplements, and we don't know the effect, especially on an acute illness, okay? Um, some of these uh, can cause these side effects from the medication rather than from the illness, okay? Um, but watch for what their performance does, okay? Uh, and again, if you're really suspicious, I'm, and I'm suspicious of everybody, um, I'm never afraid to ask them the question, okay? What about the upper respiratory infection? It's the most common site. There's 200 viruses spread by contact, okay? Intense exercise during the incubation period can put them at a great risk, okay? And this ex risk is certainly increased with sp specific viruses, uh, especially the Coxsackie because of myocarditis, okay? As I mentioned before, rhabdomyolysis, muscle breakdown is there, okay? Um, and that can lead to kidney disease, okay, and uh, kidney damage, okay? Uh, some will go on to renal failure. And we've certainly had people that work out in the uh, heat during the summer have come in and needed dialysis. Okay. Um, rarely does it cause death, but it's still a possibility. What's a good rule of thumb? It's above the neck. You can train, but usually at about a decreased performance level, about 50%. Okay. If they're below the neck, I usually advise them not to because it prolongs their illness and their return to performance is delayed, okay? okay? Strep throat, usually once they've been on antibiotics 24 hours, they can, and they're afebrile, they can return, okay? Sinusitis, very similar. Bronchitis, remember, it's below the neck. It may be a longer recovery, okay? Pushing through is not good with this, okay? Uh, obviously, if they have pneumonia, more of a challenge, okay? Sometimes if they can see how bad the lung is on their x-ray, they'll understand a little better. Okay. Um, that's otitis media. Again, those are like an upper respiratory infection. Afebrile, usually they're okay. okay. This is the one we worry about, inflammation of the myocardium from the virus, and this is what you see at post-mortem. Hopefully it doesn't get there, okay? Uh, main are Coxsackie A and B. A is foot and mouth disease, B is Bornholm's or uh, pleuridinia, right? Rare cause of sudden cardiac death, I think it was 0.1% or something, okay? This is a time of year that it occurs though, okay? That's the Coxsackie virus. Again, sometimes no way of differentiating it from the others unless they break out in a characteristic rash, okay? Okay, 
These are the typical symptoms of myocarditis, and we have to be aware of them. Okay? Return to performance, well, they have, usually it's a long delay. It's a minimum of six months. I have my cardio, cardiology colleagues take a look at it. Okay? And these are the criteria for them getting back. Okay? Okay? And their EKG has to be normal. So in summary, it's sometimes, it's a common symptom, okay? You don't know whether it's a serious illness or not, okay? Um, and sometimes it's hard to figure out what they really have, okay? Um, and often it's in hindsight, okay? But if they're not getting better, reassess them, okay? Rule of thumb, above the shoulders, generally they can train at a reduced level, below the shoulders, and that includes the stomach, okay? So if they get gastroenteritis, they should not be training, okay? Or participating even if it's a championship game, okay? Okay, and that's it.